Imagine if you were stuck on an island with no internet, no communications, and no electricity. No, you're not a star on an exciting new reality TV show. Our planet just suddenly got disconnected from all the comforts of civilization because of electromagnetism. By the way, this scenario may become a reality as early as the year 2024. The fate of mankind will once again be decided by nothing more than spots on the sun, just like the ones that have appeared on it just recently. Why are they so dangerous? How in the world do these spots appear on the perfectly bright surface of our star? Sunspots are areas on the surface of a star with a lower temperature. First of all, it should be noted that their darkness is not absolute. Rather, it's similar to the dark silhouette of a person standing against a lighted window. Today, this phenomenon is studied mainly as the center of active solar regions in which flares are concentrated. Only half of the spots last for more than two days, and just a tenth of them live for more than 11 days. However, some spots can last for as long as several months. The size of the spots is huge and reaches thousands of kilometers in length and width. If a solid ball the size of the Earth fell into such a spot, it would disappear in it like a ball of cork thrown into a fire. After a long break, two such dark areas, designated NOAA 2753 and 2754, were spotted on December 24, 2019, in the northern and southern hemispheres of the Sun. They were discovered by NASA's Solar Dynamics Observatory. Jan Janssens of the Royal Observatory of Belgium, Department of Solar Physics, stated that similar spots were previously observed on November 14, 2019. Such a long 40-day break was recorded for the first time in 20 years. Astronomers believe that it meant the arrival of the stage of the so-called solar minimum, the time of lowest sunspot activity. The formation of NOAA 2753 and 2754 indicates the beginning of a new period, which, like all previous ones, will last for about 11 years. This will be Solar Cycle 25. According to NASA, 11-year cycles are caused by the rotation of the Sun around its axis. It's not completely solid, but consists of a gaseous plasma, which rotates at different periods in different parts of the star. At the equator, the turnover is less than 25 and a half Earth days, and it's almost 38 days near the poles. The difference between the speed of rotation of the Sun at depth and on the surface leads to a gradual flip of the powerful magnetic fields of the Sun. In this case, the number of spots increases until a rearrangement of the poles of the magnetic field of the star occurs. Then, solar activity decreases, and fewer and fewer spots form on the surface of the star. This is when the solar minimum occurs. However, the rotating magnetic field doesn't stand still, and the cycle resumes. It's as if the Earth had interchanged its north and south magnetic poles every few years. Dark regions with reverse polarity first appeared at a considerable distance from the equator at high latitudes in the northern and southern hemispheres of the Sun, between 25 and 30 degrees. The spots that remained from the previous cycle were observed in a different location, closer to the Sun's equator. Janssens argues that the spots of the new and old cycles can coexist for months and even years. According to the conclusions of the Space Weather Prediction Center, or SWPC, the 25th solar cycle will reach solar maximum in about the year 2025 or 2026, then drop to a new solar minimum around 2031. Scientists warn that by the year 2024, at the peak of its activity, the Sun could have a significant impact on the Earth. According to Dean Pesnell, the project scientist of the Solar Dynamic Observatory, 
Large and complex spots cause three types of events. These are emissions of radiation from the solar surface called solar flares, powerful proton events, as well as coronal mass ejections. Each of these phenomena at one fine moment can lead to real disasters. A similar thing happened between September 1st and 2nd, 1859. British astronomer Richard Carrington watched a giant flare occur on the sun that caused a massive coronal mass ejection. As a result, one of the most powerful geomagnetic storms in the history of mankind began on Earth 18 hours later. That day, the telegraph was down throughout Europe and North America, and a lot of telegraph poles burned down from strong voltage surges. Aurora Borealis appeared in the sky almost over the entire planet. However, humanity recovered relatively quickly from the blow at that time. Civilization was not as dependent on electricity as we are now. In 1989, a geomagnetic storm five times weaker in power than the Carrington event hit Canada. Nevertheless, this solar superstorm caused a lot of trouble. In the Canadian province of Quebec, six million people were left without electricity for nine hours. During the blackout, the metro, airports, small and large businesses were closed. However, Canada was not the only one who suffered. New York's power grid fell by 150 megawatts, and an unprecedented aurora could be seen in the sky over Florida and Cuba. Perhaps our planet will suffer greater consequences if impacted by a more powerful solar storm. Radio stations, television, and the internet will go out of service. Transformers will burn out from overvoltage. Autonomous power systems will remain working for no more than three days. All electrical appliances will stop working. Transport will cease to function. Navigation aids will fail and aircraft will not be able to land on landing strips. The satellites in Earth's orbit will completely shut off and astronauts will receive an enormous dose of radiation. And this may turn out to be only a small fraction of the problems that will befall our planet. Scientists associate the occurrence of many natural disasters, such as typhoons, hurricanes, and earthquakes with outbreaks on the sun. It was solar activity that could have caused the powerful Hurricane Harvey, which swept through Texas at the end of August 2017 and caused severe flooding in Houston. Following this, a magnitude 8.2 earthquake struck southern Mexico, turning many buildings into ruins. Only beautiful auroras, which will shine very brightly across the planet, can brighten up the gloomy pictures of such catastrophes. So, a fantastically beautiful phoenix and dragon, similar to the mythical monster from Game of Thrones, appeared in the sky of Iceland in February 2019. According to one version, these amazing glows in the sky gave rise to the invasion of particles from a solar flare into our atmosphere. Yet, no matter how magnificent the radiance, it's unlikely that amidst the devastation and chaos that anyone will have time to admire their beauty. In the foreseeable future, of course, we won't be able to prevent the formation of powerful sunspots that bring such catastrophic storms to the Earth. However, scientists expect to track and timely defend their attacks. The world's largest solar telescope, the Daniel K. Inouye Solar Telescope, or DKIST, will be the first line of defense in predicting such catastrophes. It's capable of taking pictures with incredibly high resolution. By the way, recently scientists took the most detailed photographs of our star we've ever seen by using this telescope. It turned out that its surface resembles caramel corn. Cell-like structures arise in a boiling plasma as a result of movements that transfer heat from within the star to its surface and hotter areas plunging inside again. Solar plasma, as you can see, looks like a lot of cells, each of which is comparable in size to the state of Texas. 
In the future, DKIST will allow astronomers to learn more about what drives solar activity. This knowledge will help them to correctly predict the most extreme events and respond faster in dangerous situations. In addition, scientists have high hopes for the NASA Parker Solar Probe, launched on a mission to the Sun in 2018. What do you think? Will scientists be able to predict solar weather using modern instruments? Will the new cycle of solar activity turn into an electromagnetic catastrophe for us Earthlings? Leave your opinion in the comments. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe to the channel and click on the bell so as not to miss out on new releases still to come.